Hello everybody and welcome to Letterbox Book Club. My name is Claire. And I'm Mackenzie. And today we are joined by a very special guest, our friend Maddie. Hi. She'll be joining us for the, the HOFAS book discussion. Our House first of Flame and Shadow. guest that hasn't been forced into it through marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, the way you put it like that. <laughs> it's fair, I'm going to sneeze fair. at some point, but it's okay. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, we'll be discussing... House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J Mass, but only a third of it. So we're only going to discuss up to the end of chapter 34 because it's a chunky book and semi disclaimer. I can I can only speak for myself, maybe even Kenzie, but I've not read anything CC related s- since two years ago. So my raw dog in the memory. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on the other end of the spectrum. I read Crescent City 1 and 2 both in January. Oh, oh, de- oh, December, January, over that Christmas period. So I, oh, so you're I very do recent. not know how people sat with that cliffhanger from Crescent City 2 for two years. Was that your first reading that of it? or was that your first reading of them, yeah. Oh, wow! So I started Damn. with um, Throne of Glass the start yep. of 2022. And, no, 2023. Yeah. I'm already getting my years mixed up. Um, and throughout last year, I caught up to date and just got in the nick of time for Crescent City 3's release. Did you wow. read Akatar? Yes, yes. So I started with Throne of Glass, then went into Akatar, and the, and then Crescent City. I wanted to make sure I was ready in publication order in case there was any <laughs> oh, yeah. crossovers or yes. anything like that. So we went the other way. We did Akatar, Throne of Glass, then I went back to Akatar, and then Crescent City. <laughs> mm. So my question to you, Maddie, is. Have you read Tower of Dawn? Mm. I love Tower of Dawn. I don't understand how oh, it gets. Because <laughs> um, we haven't read it. We haven't read it. <laughs> no! I love Tower of Dawn. It's such a good We've read it. Good. I've read, like, the rest of the series, like, two or three times now for Akatar and um, Tog, but I've never read Tower of Dawn. Did you just read it, or did you do the tandem read? No, I did the read? tandem. I think I would have struggled more if I didn't do oh, the candle. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I think that would be the only way. I, I'd be like, I need yeah. to know what's happening with Aelin. I can't. But because I did the tandem, I think it was a, you know, it was a bit easier. Yeah, I think that would be wow. the only way I'd be able to read it. But we are just him. kale haters, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't be a kale hater unless you've read Tower of Dawn. It's just an elaborate sub story. <laughs> No, because you get so... This is really going off topic here, but, you know... The, <laughs> it's all right. The, you get so much important mm. backstory on the Valg yeah. and yeah. all that sort of stuff. and Yeah, that's fair. One day we, I will read it. Just not anytime soon. Alrighty, drawing it back in. House of Flame and Shadow, Sarah J Mass. Pops going to motion to Clay go. Kenzie, you've got to read the blurb first, dickhead. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I have the actual book. I'll go get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Maddie, I don't know if you know, but I don't read blurbs. I like to go in blind. I do the same but thing. Some- yes, but sometimes it's caught me out when, like, um, we read One Last Stop last year. Yep. Love that book. Yeah, beautiful. Love it. But I went in and then I didn't know, obviously, that it was, like, things about being stuck in time and stuff. And I was like, oh, I was like, really surprised by that. And Claire's like, it's in the blurb. I had the same thing with Crescent City 1. I just went in deep. I'm like, oh, I'm lo- this ch- found family. I'm loving all these characters. And then, like, <laughs> dead. I'm like, yeah. oh, it's yeah, literally uh, yeah. in the blurb, though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I will start us with the blurb. House of Flame and Shadow. A world in darkness, a burning spark, a blaze of stars. Bryce Quinlan is stranded in a strange new world. She's going to need all her wits about her to get home again and return to everything she loves. But that's no easy feat when she has no idea who to trust. Meanwhile, Hunt Athalar is back in the Asteri's dungeons, stripped of his freedom and the happiness he'd fought so hard for. He's without a clue as to Bryce's fate. Hunt is desperate to help his mate, but until he can escape the Asteri's chains, his hands are quite literally tied. In this breathtaking sequel to number one bestsellers, House of Earth and Blood and House of Sky and Breath, Midgard is brought to the brink of a collapse and the fate of the world rests on the hope of rebellion, but for the, the fight for survival, freedom and love may cost everything Bryce and Hunt have. <laughs> Welcome to Kenzie's natural pace. <laughs> That's good, the first time I've heard the blurb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Has it opened your mind? Oh, this book definitely opened, opened my mind plenty. Pretty. Okay. Thoughts, feelings, emotions, Kenzie? No, you go first. All right, so... 
again, we're splitting up our episodes into 34, like, chapters, because it's a chunky book, a lot of information. It's broken up into three parts anyway. Oh, it's technically two parts, but whatever. No, it's three parts. There's three parts of the book. Oh, three. Oh, well then, pardon me. Yeah, so no, this is actually perfect the way... So the people who've actually finished it by now know that. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, all right, Jesus. All right, thoughts, feelings, emotions. Um, Wow, two years in the making... Who would have thought we'd end up like this? Um, you know, I've, I've enjoyed it so far. I think even throughout Sky and Breath, I don't give a shit about Ethan and his journey. So it was a bit, it was a slow reading when it came to his chapters. Um, also, Sarah J Mass really did say, fuck y'all, you are not going to just skip chapters ever again. Because now everyone's POV is going to be in the one chapter. Kind of enjoyed it, which also meant that I couldn't avoid char- particular characters. But that's fine. But no, so far enjoying it. Loved the interactions with the Perithian crew. I enjoyed it so much. All right. I would like Maddie to go next. All right, all right. I I really, yeah, initially really enjoyed it. Didn't have the two years in the making for me. It was more like two weeks in the ma- making. But, but <laughs> not, don't want to brag too much about that. Um, look, I read chapter one and the prologue when Sarah posted it early on, on her website. And so I was really excited to get the book and then... I opened it up with the first cha- first chapter for me, which was chapter two, and it was Tharion, and I nearly died because I can't <laughs> stand Tharion. And I was like, "This oh, is no. how this is going to kick off." Great. Once I got through his section and things started rolling, but yeah, really enjoyed it. Enjoyed seeing more of the Prithian guys come come into the fold, and overall felt it was a really strong first opening for the book. So. Cool, cool. Kenzie. Oh no, this can only mean one thing. <laughs> Going last. <laughs> okay, first of all, um, I read the leaks when they were leaked. So oh, I read yeah, the right. prologue and the first three chapters. Um, and I was excited for it. And then I was unceremoniously spoiled on a TikTok for the ending, as in, like, it came up and it wasn't like, spoiler warning, this is the ending. It was, like, the ending, um, which also happened to me with The Force Awakens as well. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. But anyway. um, (laughs) um, So I knew the ending and then I knew that I would not enjoy the book because I knew how it ended and the ending, when I found out, that early on I was like how does it end up like that like what happens but anyway so then I yeah started reading and I skipped obviously the first three or four chapters or whatever it was because I'd already read them um and oh, <laughs> Sarah J Mass is a last hundred page girly <laughs> and in saying that I loved the last hundred pages and the rest of the book oh, I hated <laughs> fair enough and, it's your program. Oh, okay, program. hate is a very strong word. I think I was disappointed. Is it because you've been spoiled? I think, yeah, because I was spoiled. So I knew kind of what yeah, what was going to happen. So I knew that there was no stakes. But we also know that there's no stakes anyway. There's hardly ever stakes. And even just with part one, there was a lot of caves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's like, why create this beautiful, these three beautiful worlds and create Prithian just to spend the whole time underground? I was yeah, I was disappointed. Yeah, where I'm up to in the book, they uh, in the like part of the second part of our next potty app. Mm. You know, they they've gone to uh, that to Avalon and they're gonna go to the cave of princes or whatever. So like cave the cave system, I suppose is gonna be obviously a significant importance throughout this book and um, obviously with the whole, all the different artifacts and stuff. But yeah, it's funny how you know in Prithian, they're yeah underground and then it's gonna. I'm going to assume happen again in Avalon as well. So I think that the issue with the Prithian section is it was like the whole thing existed primarily just so Bryce could get Truth Teller. Like mm-hmm. nothing else yeah, really. For sure. All the exposition that happens in the cave system could have easily happened in, in the Crescent City world. Yeah, Midgard. In Midgard, thank you. That could have been, all that exposition could have easily happened in Midgard. If it mm. wasn't for the fact that she needed Truth Teller because the whole Unite the Blades, Unite the People prophecy, we would have probably mm. never even seen the prison crew. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no. So at the end of the day, it is a Crescent City novel. It's not a yes. like a multiverse <laughs> novel. But I think the way it was set up at the end of Sky and Breath is that you are expecting like a huge crossover 
And I know there's a lot of argument online at being like, this isn't Akatar 6, like it was never going to be like that. Then it's like, why introduce us to Resand? Why, um, like, why introduce us to the entire crew? Yeah, and then just have them off screen. Yeah, Reese just checked out straight away. We never saw Feyre, like... Yeah. Even Amran, and Amran was the one who seemed most recognisable to the old language, and she has lived beyond 15,000 years as well. And, like, she seemed like an important part in this as well. And then, yeah, suddenly it's she's tossed aside, and yeah. it's just really focusing on Asriel and Nesta, which because, yeah, Asriel has Truth Teller, and then Nesta is the one who can identify made things because inherently she has a steery kind of power in her because they made the cauldron. Mm. And so that's. And I hated the silver bean. No, oh, silver like, bead. <laughs> the, the plot device of oh, all of a sudden you can understand, like, but you can't perform a C-section. That is the hill that I'm going yes. to die on. Yeah. <laughs> because like, yes. oh, let's suddenly like we are a uh, like primitive form of fae, I guess, but we have showers and we have toilets. Um, we have like, but then we use candles and lanterns, and then yeah, let's introduce this like kind of high tech magic bean. Oh, trust me. I would love to get into Feyre's pregnancy in another time, but we will get yeah. way too off track because I've, I've got a lot of feelings about that and I haven't really spoken about anyone about that. So, yeah. Um, you're right. I was just going to say, but yeah, the instant translation thing, it just it felt like poor Ugh. writing. It was, yeah. here's this problem that I set up at the end of the last book. How do I quickly wrap this up because I need to get the pace moving? Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, I'd written down that like so much of like the magic bean or whatever it felt like just a plot device to erase like tension or any kind of like um misunderstanding misunderstanding yeah because why couldn't she because Rhysan and Amran could still understand her so I don't understand why they couldn't have been more of a key player during this because he is a person from another world who's come into your court so you'd think Rhysan will be the one dealing with her um, yeah, for sure. And I don't know why, and obviously because she pushed him out of her mind or whatever, but I felt like that could have been more of a thing. Like, maybe um, they could have used the, 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 the ball thing, the truth ball that they used to show oh, the yeah, Queen's yeah, yeah. Valaris. Like, why couldn't they have oh, created yeah. one to, for Bryce to show Midgard and yeah. Hunt and her mate and everything and blah, blah, blah. Or do they not still not have that ball in general? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they do. They've still got access to it. Yeah, it could have been done. Also, Sarah Mass said that Nyx was going to be in this, and if by being in this you mean Nyx is waiting for you, Nesta, <laughs> then I am disappointed. Yeah. Oh, that that whole line of everyone, that, you know, <sighs> all these people waiting for you, just felt mm. like you know just dropping all the names so that way you can pander yeah. to the fans. Yeah, a yeah. bit of fan service, yeah, a bit of yeah innocent fan service, because ideally if we want to briefly dip into Silver Flames, like, Cassian is overprotective of Nesta, and even though she has deemed herself an honourable warrior right now, like, he would have, you know, wanted to be a part of, be around her and protect her regardless. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. But then you don't want to overshadow the Prithian crew with this. I also thought that Nesta lost all of her stuff at the end of Silver Flames because she's like, I'll give it all back to you if you save Feyre. Maybe she just had a little bit, just the silver flame aspect. Yeah. Maybe she had a little And still more. the ability to access the dread trove. I don't know. But the only thing I can think of as to why we specifically got so much emphasis on, and I'm trying to avoid talking about parts two and three here for obvious mm-hmm. reasons, but the only way I can think <laughs> of that we got so much focus on both Nesta and, and Az is that they're going to be a more pivotal role in Akatar 6 next year. Well, Akatar 6 sure. is meant to be around Azrael and Elaine or whatever. Yeah. I mean, just release a novella. <laughs> it, it just, <laughs> Very it, passionate about it, that. It annoyed me that, and this happens throughout the book without spoilers here for parts two mm-hmm, and three, mm-hmm, constantly mm-hmm. Reese gets mentioned, the shadows get mentioned, but Reese never turns up. Mm-hmm. And it, it's At like, that last point? If this was an Akatar book, Reese just rocked yeah. up like that every single moment. Yeah. He's coming. I can see his shadows. Like, they're closing in, blah, blah, blah. This is, like, a little minor spoiler for Claire. But anyway, and then, yeah, he just doesn't show up. I want like, give me a shadow, daddy. In the CC world, there are other people that can also possess shadows, so it's probably not him. It's not in that world, that's just a really Claire. ignorant comment to say. No, the, the, oh. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it's this idea that he's this oncoming storm and just, you know, like, oh, we, Reese is going to come out. like, And he never does. Like, Reese doesn't linger like that. He just turns up and then he nicks off, like. Yeah, I just felt this whole part was really misleading. And I'm a huge fan of show, don't tell. 
so then when we end up in like the tomb or whatever this where the seed of power is and the whole like Thea Celine thing Celine's like here I'm gonna give you a whole ass monologue you're gonna stand here for about five hours and I'm gonna tell you everything that you need to know instead of just like I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know without actually telling you what you need to know (laughs) Literally, hologram NPC moment. Just click through all the dialogue mm-hmm. and, and all the questions. Once all again, it without going into parts two and three, this happens periodically throughout the book where we just get info dumped on exposition. Because yeah, It's weird because all this is based on the past history and then all the ancient yeah, texts and tomes and artistry that surrounds it. Yeah, They never figure anything out like on their own. It's always based on mm. like a past historical figure yeah. that has to come in and explain stuff. I am super interested from this point and then in the next books because I think Sarah has now announced that there's going to be like four more or something. Like this series is going to continue on. Yeah, I think it's going to do the Silver Flames thing though where it then focuses on other people as like the main oh, characters. Oh yeah, she's already confirmed that this is pretty much the end of um, Bryce, and Hunt. Bri- Bryce and Hunt's story, which is fine. I'm happy with that. I just don't know how you could fit, like, another four books worth of content in this same mm. world. Well, I reckon it's going to be, like, Ethan, Tharian, Rune, yeah. Lydia. Oh, if they give me a whole Tharian book, I'm DNFing that already. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> first, first page, nah. Yeah. Um, in saying that, though, with what we are have learned and what Claire is going to learn, I'm very interested about the whole uh, timeline of it all because I think she's fucked it from what she's said in the yes. past. But yes, because she's said that Kingdom of Ash and Silver Flames are happening at the same time. But now that like this stuff has come into mm-hmm. it. And stuff that gets revealed later on now, it doesn't line up right. Yeah, something has gone terribly wrong. And that was the moment, Claire, later on when you find something out. That was the only time that I cried twice. <laughs> okay, only twice. And it wasn't even about Bryce and Hunt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair, 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 fair. I was just going to say that um, I did hear that Sarah Damas did say, like, the next... Or she alluded to that the next world she's writing about would be, like, Tog-esque. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think one, one of the criticisms I've seen a lot online um, is that people were expecting, like, basically an Avengers-level story where... Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah I've been seeing that too. All the great heroes are going to come together and save the day, but I think it was... I prefer the way it was done mm. because it, it was always meant to be Bryce and Hunt's story. Yeah. At minimum, Bryce's For story. Sure. You didn't want Reese and Nesta coming in and just swing their weight around in in, in um, Midgard, and also yeah. you'd have to have the whole time like this is how this technology works and this how this technology yeah. works and you know that just would have yeah. eaten up way too much. I loved time. all the memes and stuff of people imagining when Cassian and Azriel get their hands on guns and they're just like Wah! yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And again, yeah, I've seen like that criticism suit. again of people criticizing other readers saying oh you know you all expected a big avenger style thing and it's like yes because it was set up to be that it was yeah. set up like she's landed in this other world big bad daddy resand is here ready to help her get her mate back because you know how he feels about mates I mean, and then it's just like oh i'm gonna go fight a worm <laughs> get a hologram and be on my merry way <laughs> reese rocking up at the end had Nick Fury mm, vibe. Nothing. Like, it felt mm. like I, I, I'm here to talk it to you about the scene. Faye Initiative or I don't know. Like, yeah, it was a post credit yeah, scene. It was a post credit scene, 100%. Pretty much. And then we only get him initially in that first chapter where they're interrogating Bryce and then he's buggered off. I understand Bryce is very much um, Aelin vibes in that she doesn't tell anyone her plan. She's very ruthless, blah, blah, blah. But I just didn't like that she essentially stole Truth Teller. And then just was like, see ya, like, I'm going to trick you all and see ya. Because, again, like, you want to get your mate back. These people know about mates. These people know how you feel about love and saving your world. Like, Yeah, yes, I understand where you're coming from. But there's two things we need to remember here. We know Nesta and Az. Bryce doesn't. Mm. Bryce, yeah. And yeah. Bryce just thinks there's some random other people who are in the way of her objective. And also, Bryce does not trust the Fae as far as she could throw them. This yeah, is true. No, Bryce no. cannot stand yeah. the fight. So I mean, I'd trust them after the magic bean. <laughs> but like Bryce is just like, I need to get this so I can get back and I can I can save everyone. Like that's her only focus. So while we may not like it as readers because we love these other characters, it makes sense from a character point of view. 
Yeah. Um, speaking yeah, of sure. as, here's our great shadow singer, spy master, everything. How come you can't figure out why her hands aren't healing? <laughs> <laughs> but her knees healed. Nessa, her knees are healing. <laughs> He just really wanted to hold her hand. That's all. I must admit, that threw me though. I'm like, why aren't her hands healing? Like, yeah, I, same. I, really I was like, scared. oh. Mate, speak for yourself. Worry about your own hands. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry. In a, in a goofy mood. Yeah, no, that was a little bit. I don't know. It didn't seem like it. Like, it's just such a weird thing. I suppose he's worried about any sort of anti magic healing. I don't know weapon that she'd encountered or a scratch or something but yeah it just seemed a bit too much mm. I thought like and then she the river again. was going to be like a magic river or something sure also yeah. I didn't like this whole like power being left at the bottom of the caves type thing it felt mm. it felt like a video game power up like oh yeah, I yeah. Just, Bryce Bryce has leveled up like yeah and then you level up but then and you think you're safe but then there's a boss battle <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, and Bryce getting shitty that, oh, we, we didn't have to kill her. We, we could have got more information out. Like, you were lucky to have survived that encounter, but okay. Yeah. It really did read like a D&D sort of encounter where that one person who just kept role-playing and just wanted to keep rolling and seeing what would happen, and then it just fucked everybody over. And then again, we know that Resend, like doesn't know what the prison is. It's this big mysterious thing, blah, blah, blah. But again, you'd think Amarin would kind of have kind of an idea of what's going on down there. Sure. Or you think that there'd be any clue as to something being underneath it or <laughs> there's just an mystery there. I didn't like the fact that we've set, it's been set up for books now that Amarin's been around for like 15,000 years. Amarin was there when everything... Oh, but no, I went into the prison before everything really happened. It's like, well, what's the point mm. of you being this old then if yeah. you don't have yeah. information for us? And I want... The reveal. I want the Amran reveal. You are an Asteri or you are a Valg, and I need to know which one you are. <laughs> <laughs> Just for closure, please. Instead of, like, she's probably off drinking some blood somewhere. <laughs> surely the prison monsters, like, surely... Because it's only been 15,000 years, and mm. a lot of them are somewhat immortal mm. in their own right, in a way. And we've learned that yeah. they're pretty much the Asteri pets slash monsters yeah. that they've let loose in Prithian. Surely they would know that... 15,000 years ago, they've had this mighty overlords mm. that have disappeared or have been conquered, and yet nothing has been said about that. Also, I forget, is the bone carver still in the prison? Or did they let him out? There was a deal of sorts. Because you know what would have been cool? The bone carver appearing as Micah to Bryce. Yeah, sure. Boom. Why would the bone carver... Oh, right, yeah, I gotcha, yeah. No, I think the bone carver was released from memory. Yeah, I think in Akawar. But it's like, you're in the prison. I want to see some prison things, you know? I don't just want a cave. I mean, how did we feel about a random mystery being down there? It's another way to just really tie the two worlds together. And I guess, uh, like, a little um, uh, sneak peek of what the swords can do. The sword and the dagger. The thing that yeah, for sure. got me with the other Asteri is said Asteri was acting like didn't have too much of a familiarity with the Asteri that we know. It was like, Ooh. oh, yeah, I know of them, but, you know, we didn't really connect you know that we didn't so, really hang out yeah yeah but like it's the sort of thing okay so you're not part you're not the missing asteri from the seven we know you're another one mm-hmm. so how many more mm-hmm. of you are out there just on random mm-hmm. worlds Ooh, then they could have inevitably evolved perhaps into valg or some different sort of if we're going off of that other like asteri just planted around like they could be experimenting with demon stuff as well to then create potential Valk stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I always thought, yeah, that there was pretty much seven main Asteri and yeah, one got eaten and then the other one disappeared and then Mm. obviously this is the one that disappeared and everyone thought it would be Amran. But yeah, no, crazy. (sighs) Yeah, she was really put there to, yeah, connect the two worlds. Surely with with that Asteri type of power, but maybe the coffin probably uh, shielded it a bit more. Surely like someone as powerful as Reese could have sensed something. Because he is ultimately, in the grand scheme of themes now, related to Selene. But I think that was the point with the prison. Like, it was so much oh, evil yeah, that's contained. Right, yeah. All the creatures there, there was so much evil contained there, so it couldn't be sensed. And then, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm hoping that it comes back to it, but what was the point of, oh, she looks like Reese's sister? Yeah. Because Reese's bloodline is related to Selene. Yeah, but we knew that. 
No, we did. I didn't. I, I didn't. A know line that. like that makes it seem like that was Reese's sister. Like I mean, mm, exactly. It, the the knee jerk reaction is yeah, of course that must be Reese's sister. Like we don't know much about that. And... Because yeah, the big fan theory is that she's still alive or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I guess the genetics of it all. She inevitably looked like Celine. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and so at the end of the day, this meant nothing, and Bryce ended up with what she wanted and back in her own world. Yeah. Anyway. Clean so, as a whistle. Yep. So let's talk about some things that have been happening in Midgard. So let's talk about Tharian. Let's not. Or the Tharian slash Ethan. Just like the little wolf pack that they've got going Tharian's on. Tharian's selling himself into slavery because he's an absolute numpty. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like... Yeah, um, honestly. There's, there's just no thoughts. Like, he's supposed to child of ADHD. Like, compulsive. Darian and Ethan <laughs> share one brain cell. I'm sure of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's supposed to be what? Like a captain? Captain of, of intelligence. Military spies? Intelligence? He's not very intelligent by the sense. Mind right. you, but he suppose... stays in Crescent City 1. I don't know how I got the job. So, <laughs> yeah. even he knows yeah. it. Claire, I need you to re-jog my memory because it has been like two okay. days since I've read this. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. What happens to Tharian in part one? Part one, uh, he, it's just him living life as part of the Viper Queen slave and then he inevitably gets rescued amongst everybody. Oh, and that's when they all leave? I believe. Okay, so is Tharian not meant to be addicted to the Viper Queen's venom? Is there not any withdrawals? Yes, that that never gets revisited. Has he not spent an amount of time out of water where he had to, has to give up his tail? <laughs> Remember, this was a big thing. Again, this was another big theory. No, they, they, they already established the water thing because the Viper Queen had a tank for him. Ah. So that was sort That's of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right with the Venom thing. There was no withdrawal. It was just like, we're all good now. Like Yeah, because so then that takes away her power. Like, anyone can walk away from her then. It was part of Ethan's deal for him to fight for Tharian and their lives. I understand that, that, but there should still yeah. be at least Withdrawal. some like I get like you're allowed to yeah. go but you're going to suffer. Yeah, you're, you're going to be you're going to suffer but you're going to be happy about it. I think his self-loathing and already miserable state just outweighs those withdrawal yeah, symptoms well, anyway. <laughs> He's very down in himself. And for your memory Kenzie because I just went back on it. Um at the mm-hmm. end of part 1 is where they pretty much burned the the whole area down. Yep. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It pretty much, it, the part that we're ending on is when pre- pretty much Lydia is en route to the Depth Charger. Okay. So Saving the boys. Ethan has done his fight in the pit. Yep, he's killed Sig- uh, Sigrid. Okay, uh, so let's fe- talk about that. Fender. <laughs> okay. To be fair, I completely forgot that this element was part of the like very, very last chapter of Sky and Breath, like after the acknowledgements. So, I... but, so I thought that, yeah, you know, we've got another Fender heir. Okay, this is going to be really important. Like, she's going to overthrow Sabine, then she's going to be the prime apparent, and then it's going to fix everything because she is going to be the new Danica. But no, let's just kill her off. Before she even has a personality. Uh huh, and then never mention her again. <laughs> Don't worry, I've already read up to that. <laughs> where, where I'm up to, they're working on her, you know? Well, I, I'm going to tell you now that not much comes out of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> yeah do they just okay. hang in there that's all we'll say but yeah but yeah, yeah. The, the overall plot arc of Sigrid is just pointless yeah yeah I really don't don't care about the wolf politics but it's all about Ethan and his emotionalness towards and the journey that Ethan is on and where it ends Claire could have been done without this introduction of the air anyway the- yeah yeah would you say it was just something added and it was just a bit too much? She was a manic pixie dream fender. <laughs> no, no, just like eat the storyline for Ethan. Like, does he need to have such a prominent storyline that we have to... <laughs> yeah. f- yes. So the, Yes, but not this way. It could have been done another way. The issue I have with Sigrid is she follows a literary trope of fridging. Like, she's around to be killed off to further the plot of the male character, which is Ethan. Manic Pixie Dream Fendia. Man- yeah, exactly. It's, <laughs> once again, like, she has no personality. She's just there to help the man get where he needs to be. Mm-hmm. To be fair, she's been locked up in a tank for a long time. <laughs> Ethan could have done all this with just the make your brother proud prompt. Sure, yeah. Because I thought, I thought he was going to die. I was like, here we go. Sigrid yeah. is going to kill him. But no, apparently. Yeah. No, he'll just do mm. it. I am very interested about him, though. Now I'm very interested about him. 
and his because you finished we it. Can't get uh-huh. into that though. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. We'll get there. We'll eventually reveal all. But yeah, I really personally don't care about the wolf politics of it all. I didn't care about it in Sky and Breath, and I yeah. don't care about I it. I don't now. care about the wolves. I just care about Ethan. Or, fair, also, fair. my heart breaks for Lydia. Like she's Lydia. trying to reach out to to Rune and. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. And yeah, he's, and he's just like fuck off. Yeah, like you're dead to me. She's Last trying words. so hard, but it's an ultimate betrayal. And like, yeah, if you were Rune, like, how would you react? You know, this your lover has now betrayed you, but then she's being a double agent, so she's ultimately a a good guy. You're locked up and you're in a dungeon, being tortured then again by her, we, all to keep up this guise. We will get more into it in part two and three, hundred percent. But coming out of this whole book. Lydia is my standout. Like, she's my ride or die. She's she the only is... reason I was emotional. Yeah, she um she reminds me so much, and this isn't a spoiler. This is my own thoughts here, but yeah, yeah. you know, she reminds me so much of Aelin. She really does. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I get that. No, yeah, I'm enjoying her storyline obviously a lot more than Ethan's, and like the the emotional turmoil that she goes through. Yeah, I from what I've read so far, I am really enjoying Lydia's storyline and where she's gonna go. Yeah. Mm. I'm very excited about her, her and Rune's book, if that's coming. Yeah. It better be. Oh, what I was going to say before, sorry, back to Prithian crew real quick. I'm sure Sarah J Mass can write, like, again, like a and d style once-off where, like, Prithian crew, Midgard crew, they can come together and they can defeat some sort of big evil just for shits and gigs. She like, could, I'd love to see that. But Sarah's been very clear that she wants these books to be able to read as standalone series. Then she shouldn't have written the crossover into it. <laughs> Imagine you start with CC. Yeah, you'd be so confused. And you're like, who are these people? <laughs> oh, and it's interesting because for the longest time it was, oh, you can read the books in any series you want. Like, it doesn't matter. It yeah. doesn't matter. Now it matters. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, imagine being someone, yeah, who started with CC and, like, not knowing Asriel or Nesta or Reese. Or even that Reese and, like, like, Feyre are together. Yeah, yeah, and, like, Nyx and, like, Cassian, Mm. and they're like, who are these fuckers? And they're probably being like, well, as, or these people are assholes because they, you know, manipulated Bryson to go through this cave system. Mm. Like, they're not great people. I'll be interested to see the timeline of the next book because I think it was that there was six months between... Silver Flames and Sky and Breath, like the end. Yep. And, and now yeah. this one. So I'm interested to see if it's going to be kind of set just before and during, and then Nestor and Azrael will just be off screen and while other stuff is happening, or if mm-hmm. it's going to be set after and then they're kind of now dealing with now we can world, world step. Maybe. And um, I think for the Akatar book, they'll probably reiterate some things in passing. Like, oh, remember that time that random chick came into our world and now Truth Teller is gone? Yeah. Like, what's going on? They'll just say yes, that, yeah, gone. in passing. Just, just as, just as, Bri- shut up. <laughs> just as Bryce, <laughs> this is what I do. <laughs> just as Bryce is like, when she reiterates these characters in her world, oh, this recent guy, this Azriel, this Nesta, they helped me, blah, blah, blah. Mm. It'll be like that, but for this Akatar 6. Anyway, so Lydia, heartbreaking. She has to watch Rune be tortured mm. and then oh, the boys being tortured, Hunt and uh, Baxian. Favourite moment? I think we all know what it is. Rune, Rune gets his head bitten off. I was, oh, trying... I was wondering if that was in part one or not. <laughs> so, I yeah, was, yeah, was trying to imagine the semantics. Are they hung, like, upside down? No, they're meant to be hung by the wrist because the whole idea of chewing off the hand was Rune was going to use his legs to move the poker up. Oh, that's right. But, like, I don't understand why, like... <laughs> what? Because like... you need it... <laughs> yeah, well, because... Oh, because then his stub would fall out. Yeah. And then he had the extra leverage to yeah. maneuver. <laughs> I was just picturing yeah. it, and I was like, I just couldn't... In my... It was just vibes. It was just swinging, eating, <laughs> and vibes. <laughs> and just, like, them trying to be funny amongst their impending death. My, two, yeah, two my... angels and a prince walk into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> my walk heart into a dungeon. dropped when Pollux walked in at, at, just after mm. the hand situation because like that was now all for nothing like yeah yeah I mean yeah they're in the most what highly secured dungeon in all of Midgard with the, with locked in within the most powerful people enemies like mm. it was always going to be difficult for them to get out and obviously Lydia was always going to be the one to, mm. to ride that train are we them. now on the train that the hawk isn't born <laughs> I didn't know that was the a theory. That Vaughan? was a theory. Vaughn from, you know, um, Maeve's cadre. Yeah. 
Um, so there's that joke that like Vaughn, she sends Vaughn off to find Lorcan, Lork- Lork- <laughs> and then he's never seen again. <laughs> Or heard of. <laughs> or heard of. And so I think that he could shift into a hawk as well or whatever. And so that's like the theory was that Vaughn is now he's world hopped Look, into I, this world. <laughs> I adore the Throne of Glass series. It's my favourite of all of them. Um, so I'll take any references I can. So thank you. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Let's go with it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. Now he's just dead. Yeah, because he's never seen from again. It's very much the same as how um, Nox is back in for one sentence <laughs> and then he's like yeah. see ya <laughs> yeah goodbye yeah but yeah so that's a theory that the hawk is Vaughn but I don't think he would torture people like that no I mean you never know I forgot again I should have done a reread <laughs> because I was like there's the hind the harpy the hammer and I'm like I don't understand what's happening right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah as you're reading mm. and I forgot that the harpy was like Killed? Dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because Lydia killed her because she was going to reveal the identity and blah, blah, blah. Uh, blow her cover. I was actually quite surprised, and I know this is just because of the events of the last book, that the Ophian, Ophian, I say Ophian, 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 like, mm. is that an audio book? Is that the way they pronounce it in the audio? For now that their presence or within this first part has been very minimal. And I liked that because I, I don't know, I didn't really... For now, I said Kenzie. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Put that face away. Kenzie has the best facial reactions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I liked that their presence was uh, halted like a little bit just because, I don't know, I didn't truly get behind them in Sky and Breath. Even though it's for a relatively good cause, but it always turns out to be that trope that that revolution isn't as good as what they think they are, mm-hmm. etc. In terms of morals. So. so I'm glad they're at a minimum right now. Mm. Mm. Have you met uh, Ithris? Yes, the Sprite Queen. Lydia uses her to help blop everybody. And I like the mention of Leobar as well. It's like, because Leobar would have respected her and would have loved her. And it's a nice little throwback to her sacrifice as well. Very much parallel with the blowing up of the Asturi to Leobar blowing up Micah, essentially. How did we feel about, and this obviously goes way beyond part one, but... Without going into details, how do we feel about the smut in the book? Because I felt personally, every time it came up, I was like, there's more important stuff going on. Yes! Like, yes! Like, it just felt misplaced. I've not encountered okay, any you smut have, yet. Right. But, so without details, seeing as we're not up to that for Claire's mm. benefit, every time yeah. it happened, it felt like... It was like, like the worst possible it, time! Yeah, it felt like Aelin and Rowan doing in the middle of a battlefield. It was like, guys, this is not the right time for this. <laughs> Like, yeah. Have you read um, from Blood and Ash? No. <laughs> it's reminded me of that because <laughs> there's literally like in the middle of a battle. There's like a sex. Yeah. Like they have a yeah. quickie in a carriage. Look, yeah. I understand that like Sarah J. Mass's books these days are more smutty and spicy, and that that's great. But this book felt like it just did not need any of those scenes. Mm. Yeah, and that's the thing. I, I think coming from Silver Flames as well, I was like, I expected a little bit, and I appreciated it. I liked the level of smart in the other ones and the other Crescent Cities. But, yeah, it just felt like complete wrong timing for it, and then it felt really rushed, and I was like, I'd rather if you're going to put it in, like, I'd rather you spend your time on it. Yeah, that's it. Like, the only, the only ones I felt was warranted throughout the book was probably Pollux, and it was... Gross and dis- it was gross and disgusting, and it was basically SA, but it was important to understand the power he was holding over Lydia's mm. character. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure, for sure. Yeah, like it served a narrative purpose. Yeah, I-, I suppose ultimately, because obviously I haven't finished it, it's leading to I don't know a calamitous esque events, and like yeah, when do you have time to get it on mm. when? That you're busy doing other things. Mm. But again, it is very much like the back in the day when, yeah, like soldiers or whatever would have a good fuck the night before a battle to like uh, yeah, get them going. Yeah, let it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. There, uh, there is mention, Claire coming up, uh, um, mentioned that they're both still on their respective contraceptions. <laughs> okay, love um, that. Yeah, and then I was worried as well that there was going to be pregnancy epilogue. <laughs> But there's okay. no, it's fun. <laughs> okay, yeah. good, 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 good. Also, did anyone remember if Bryce and Hunt ever, like, 
had a marriage ceremony because they're married yes! now. That was the next thing I wanted to bring up. That happened. I was like, wait, when did that happen? Why does Sarah yeah. insist on having off-screen marriages? Three for three. Three! See, I looked it up and apparently because in Sky and Breath there was that mating ceremony between Celestina and the one of the guys. Mm-hmm. And um, apparently Bryce claimed Hunt in that moment and therefore that served as... I don't know, a, a ceremony of sorts or it, it start. it became like an official thing. It was recognized as like an official marriage yeah. thing. I just, sorry, my computer made a sound. Um, I just assumed that because she went before everyone and was like, oh, this is Prince Hunt Dannon yeah. or whatever now, like that, that was that. But yeah, I was like, you're like when they were saying, you're my wife, you're my husband, what else? Like, when did this happen? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because where I'm up to, he's he used the prince card, and I'm like, bro, like, when did it at happen? At this point, I'm waiting for Sarah to release an anthology, like, sort of like Assassin's Blade, an anthology of short stories, and it's going to be all the marriages between the various characters, because where are these yeah. stories? Yeah, the fan art yeah. is serving me really well with the marriages. Like, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, not even... Like, why she could have just included a oh, and then you know, that night Hunt and I snuck away and saw a priestess or whatever. Just mention something, don't just throw it in there. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, there's also, um, coming up, Claire, there's a reference to a character's power that is apparently mentioned in one line in previous books, but now suddenly oh it's God. kind of important in this book. And I was like, what? I knew this is going to happen. Mm. It always happens. It's the obscure one niche line that mm-hmm. everyone skims over or mm-hmm. doesn't really recognize. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Goddamn. So like, stop doing oh, this. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. To the overall situation of the this book, not talking details here because I, I, I don't know if Kenzie's read it yet, but how do we feel about the five or six or however many of these bonus chapters. Oh, we have strong feelings about that. Hang on, just quickly, if you Google Flame and Shadow, Google, like, has yes. stars and stuff. Oh, cool. <laughs> cool. I think Shout when you search Crescent City, it also does the same thing. Dope. But yeah, the, the marketing scam that is all these bonus chapters. Okay, yeah, so I've read a lot of them just on TikTok. Yeah. Um, and I, oh, they serve no purpose. <laughs> And again, it's like, why are you making us buy five physical copies of this book? I'd rather her say, like, do, like, a Patreon kind of thing or whatever, but say, like, okay, pay 5 to $15 on my website and you can have access to a digital file of all of them. Look, I mm, yeah. can see it being beneficial if it was just to indie booksellers, like, because, mm. you know, we're always trying to support s- small bookstores. And we were like, oh, yeah, if you buy from a local, you're going to get access to the bonus chapters. And, you know, it'd be all of them. Like, mm. buy from buy from a local store, you'll get this. You go to one of the chains, you don't get it. Like, mm. that would be one way to go about But this idea being like, Barnes & Noble have got this. Waterstones have got this. Indies have got this. Mm-hmm. Like, that's where it was just getting a bit ridiculous. And, like, where's our Aussie equivalent? Do we, we get nothing? nothing? As you. <laughs> Dimix. <laughs> Dimix gets this one. <laughs> But yeah, just uh, as Kenzie said, they and I, I've only skimmed a couple of them. I haven't read all of them, but they and uh, as expected, they serve no purpose. They they haven't driven the plot at all. They're just cute little moments or whatever. I've already seen people online going, "I'm I'm selling six copies of of mm. Crescent City Three because they went and bought all these copies and just wanted the the bonus chapters." Yeah, the over consumerism of it all. Mm-hmm. It screams Taylor Swift with six different vinyl variants. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, it's it's Taylor Swift. It's it's Stanley Cups. It's everything. Over just female overconsumption is out of control. Yes. That they've worked out that that women from about fifteen to twenty five predominantly will buy just about anything as long as it's trendy, and they can market to that. And just the idea of, I suppose, in the book space, like the exclusivity of it, because not everyone is probably going to buy all six or seven different books as well. Or there's a particular character pairing that they want to read about, but then I would, I would then assume... They're not even different books. They're little booklets you get with the main book. Right, right yeah. Um, the only bonus chapter I have ever enjoyed was the bonus chapter of Azriel in... Silver Flames, maybe. 
I think that that rings a bell. Yeah, when he's talking to Reese because he's like pining over Elena or whatever, and he's like, "It isn't fair, you know. There's three sisters, three brothers. You would think that it would like we would be mates, blah blah blah." And I was like, "Yes, give me the controversy, give me the pining, give me the how does this all come together in this overarching story of this constant three And that was the only one that I was like, "I can get behind this," but everything else just is just extra fodder. <laughs> I think as well, just in terms of bonus chapters, I think Verity's bonus chapter by Colleen Hoover mm. was actually pretty gnarly yeah, as well. Good. But that's probably done done quite well. Whereas with this type of huge series, like, yeah, it does come across as like fan servicey. Because I think there's a chapter between Bryce's dad, or the Autumn King, and and her mum. I think there's a bonus chapter with those two, and I'm like, is that really important right now? Is like, yeah, does it serve a purpose to the story? The first 34 chapters, other than skimming Ethan and not caring about Ethan, it's been great. I am going to say something really controversial about this book. It could have been two parts, and this part could have been cut out. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, like, trimmed down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, there was a, yeah. Lot of, there was a lot of partial paragraphs within the chapters of other people's mm. point of view that mm. it just seemed, like, yeah. unnecessary as well. Also, I kept saying, because now there's this... um. Uh, like conversation online as well about how yeah there's multiple pov changes within the chapters and people are saying that this happened in kingdom of ash as well but i do not remember that happening in kingdom of ash hang on you don't remember what happened in kingdom the of ash. multiple pov changes within a chapter no i'm fairly certain it was like character to character exactly because this chapter. made it feel the first time i read it i was like oh there's a typo like they've yeah, I was like, oh, it's not meant to be about this character. And it just felt, like, so fast-paced all the time. I was like, give me a break. I actually um, um, was listening to the audiobook as well as reading on my e-reader because I'd listen to the audiobook while I was at work, e-reader when I was mm-hmm. at home. I do that. Um, and with the, with, with the audiobook, every single time it just jumped to another point of view because I couldn't see page breaks or anything. I'm listening to it. It was so confusing at first, trying to work out what was happening. And only recently, if I beta read a manuscript for someone, where they did exactly the same thing, and it just went from point of... It was always this one person's point of view, and it just went straight to a different character without any breaks or anything. I said, yeah, I need to change that. It's confusing. But yet, here we are with one of the biggest authors in mm-hmm. the world, and she's just done mm-hmm. I'm reading um, a fanfic at the moment, and it's it does it, like, not as much, but it's a couple of times. And I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> who are we talking about yeah. right now? Yeah, I thought there was a formatting error with my Kindle, because I'm like, it'd be first it would be about Bryce being a Prothean, and then the next... Sp- sentence would be like oh ethan blah 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 and i'm like and then i could have what forgiven happens? it if yeah you know it started with bryce and then went to ethan and then ended the chapter but then it would go back to bryce or it would go back mm. to a different character I was like what are you doing again um and now with the news that she's released we're well, not releasing but she's announced you know seven titles or whatever that are going to be announced this year um i'm still on the ghost rider train like <laughs> <laughs> oh, I completely forgot about the Ghost Rider aspect of it yeah, all. Yeah, there has to oh. be something going on. Like, <laughs> what you think is a Ghost Rider helping us? So we think us, yeah. that there's a big theory that Silver Flames was written, if not all, but partially by a Ghost Rider. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that one. Mm. Oh, Just this is because like three of years like, ago now. The way, yeah, the way it um does like a 180 on like characters and stuff tone shift a language shift because suddenly there's um lots of cunts lots of cocks being thrown around <laughs> but yet you you hear sarah talk about it and sarah's like silver flames was so special to me because i am Nestor. I know. yeah she, i saw that i yeah. saw that yeah. yeah she feels so attached and she's like i struggle sarah. to like reread that one yeah because you didn't write it <laughs> oh, Kenzie, that is Sorry. a big accusation to make. Kenzie's just like, overzealous. Yeah. And then again, um, we talk about this a lot in our episode, but then how um, everyone, because Re- like the main point is that Reese is just a big old asshole in it. And it's like, that, not my president, not my Reese And everyone's like, that's because you've just been seeing Reese through like Feyre's point of view and Feyre's a um, unreliable narrator. And then Nesta hates him yeah. anyway. And I was like, okay, that's fine. But. Like, it was just a huge shift. It's like he still has to be kind of somewhat nice for Feyre to fall in love with him. I have to admit, I don't like, and this is totally gone off track, we're talking about Akatar now, but I don't like the fact that 
how we've had a change in um, writing style. Yes, yeah, for sure. Like we had first, it was always first, first and then it went to third. third. Yeah, and now we're going on the mm-hmm. third person. And I'm like, I would. It'd be fine if this was a different series, but it's mm-hmm. not. This is meant to be the next book. Not only mm-hmm. have we jumped from first person yeah. to, from, from from narrators, but we've jumped from first to third. Mm. I believe that it's meant to be so. Um, Akatar, Akamath, Akawar is like a trilogy. Then like Starlight, Frost, Frost and Starlight is like a little Christmas break, special. Christmas special. And then it's going to be Silver Flames, Boom and Boom trilogy. And then I think there's three more. And then same with this now, Crescent City is meant to be Boom, Boom, Boom. And then I think that, I mean, you need to read all of them anyway, but I think it's the same with Tog. You can read um, Tog, Crown of Midnight, Air of Fire, Boom, and then the next three, like create like another one and then whatever. Yeah. But like going back to what you were saying with like Crescent City meant to have like another four yeah. books. Th- this is where I just started to think: Are we just oversaturating the market mm-hmm. at this yeah. point? Are we dragging these stories out more yeah. than they actually need? Yeah. And are they going to be three books of this length? Yeah. Because number one, I got because it was world building and setting us up. But then now, and the second one I can get as well. But I just don't think this one needed to be this long. Yes and no. So going back to what you were saying with part you know, part one not really needing to exist, um, but, or not needing to exist in as long form as it did. I agree to an extent. It was very ex- exposition heavy, very info dumpy. It was like the whole point of it was to get Bryce what with the sword and the information she needs and no powder there. But I felt like the overall, without going to parts two and three, the overall structure of this book actually felt like it flowed better than the previous books. It felt like it was less of a, Everything's resolved in the last hundred pages, and more. It was built gradually throughout the like the last half of the book. So that way, I think Sarah's writing is actually getting better. If it is Sarah, <laughs> <laughs> I felt like Sarah's writing's getting getting better because it's it's less just. And then it's all fixed up at the end. We won't talk about the magic bean at the start, but you know, <laughs> it felt like things were fleshed out a lot better rather than just being like, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then I'll talk about it again in, like, the next parts, but I just felt by the time I got to the end, I was like, the only thing that the first part achieved was getting Truth Teller. Being away from the dungeons and kind of separated from the Asteria. Yeah, and then I think it was only, like, a couple, it had been five days or something. Yeah, it hadn't been very long. And, like, I wanted to be three months. (laughs) Like, really stretch it out. Yeah. (laughs) Let Bryce visit Valaris. City of Starlight. Yeah. She has starlight power. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like the same as like the book being Flame and Shadow and everyone's like, oh, Aelin was referenced as being <laughs> Flame, Flame, Flame and Shadow, and Shadow yeah, in one yeah. of the books. It's like, Aelin's going to yeah. rock up. I like... really loved the, all the theories online. It's like, it's like, Aelin's coming, but then it was like, no, let my baby rest. But then like, oh, but I wanted to come back here. Yeah, yeah. I think. Can you imagine Aileen with a gun? Yeah, I, th- yeah. I think in Rowan, because it has been two years that we have been able to stew on this for so long and make our theories and really be in depth in the community that we have hyped it too much. Yeah, oh, 100%. 100%. And maybe book information has been skewed because it has been so long and people like us or me like don't reread things and I'll just take things as as it's said on online as well. But also, when these things, like, I, I want to enjoy a book for what it is. I enjoy the crossovers and I enjoy the hints and stuff, like, of this multiverse that is happening. But I don't want to have to be reading a book and have a pen next to me and be in there annotating and be in there thinking um, and analysing every single little detail. And, like, oh, they mentioned... Um, a stag, like there's a stag in Throne of Glass. Oh, they mentioned flat, like flame power, like Aelin has flame power or whatever. Like I don't want to have to be there thinking about other things while I'm in this world. Yeah, there's no. plenty of other people on the internet that will do exactly. that. Exactly, especially girl. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how do you feel about all the people who read it within like, or stayed up till midnight and then read it within like eight hours? Yeah, I did crazy. see a TikTok. Yeah, it was eight thirty in the morning, and someone's like, "So I finished it." <laughs> I was like, "What?" And it was like the day of release. They're like, "Yeah, I waited till midnight and then I just read it." Wow, like some people. She, I mean, props to them, but like I would have been tired and drowsy. Like I wouldn't have, would not have been able to absorb any information. 
I have done that with with other book releases where it's something I'm really hyped for and I smash it out that fast. And you don't take in mm. things properly on that no. first read because you, you're so concerned with just trying to get it all read mm. so that way yeah. you don't get spoiled or what, what have you. Yeah. That you don't get to... In- you don't get to enjoy it properly. Mm. Yeah, or they have that like superiority of like I finished first. I know, I know, I know what's happened. Blah blah blah. When I went in to collect my other orders from Dimix this week, I finally got Iron Flame, <laughs> um, and then they went to like give me Hofas because I was like, oh, I'm here to get like an order, and I think it was two days after release. Yeah. And then they went to give it to me. I was like, oh, no, like, it's a, like, I'm getting Iron Flame. And they're like, oh, sorry. And I was like, yeah, I've already read that. And they're like, what? <laughs> <It's just> like... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they had just like piles of Hofas. <laughs> they just assumed you were there for Hofas. And I was just like, yeah, I've already read it. And they're like, what did you think? And I was like, I don't want to tell you. Because <laughs> <laughs> you generally, more often than not, have the most unpopularist of opinions. <laughs> no, but I'm seeing a lot online, though, of people like, like, yeah, they, might not have found it as enjoyable, but mm. whatever, whatever. Look, if I was going to talk only part one, because let's face it, that's all we should be talking about right now. If I was talking about just part one, I I I enjoyed it. I I I liked the the characters sort of coming in together, but I felt it too exposition heavy. Because mm. mm. yeah, you have she has to have written it in a way where the two worlds are connected and it, it is true in fact that Prithin has become the first world home base of like everything of the start of this universe. I just, and I've said this and I will say it so many times, I just don't enjoy the criticism of readers to other readers who wanted it to be a crossover saying, well, it's a CC3 um, book. And again, it's like, okay, well then she shouldn't have written it that way in that it, alluded to a big crossover. The, the thing is, Akatar has its own fandom in itself, and Akatar-specific fans are very, very passionate. I'm trying to be politically correct here. They're, <laughs> they're, they're very, very passionate about Akatar, like, in a different way to, like, a Throne of Glass fan is. But I suppose it doesn't help that Akatar is also ongoing. Yeah, but, like, they're all just... Yeah, well, in the way, th- therefore, throwing a glass fan should be even more feral to try and get anything because it's been so long. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, so I think because they're so passionate, all they wanted was more Akata, mm. and uh, they, they they went into it like I'm going to read the Crescent City book because I want the Akata characters mm. instead of going into it being like I want to read Bryce's story and hey, they're here, there, that's cool too. Damn it. Yeah, because oh, it's damn. yeah, I guess because Akita is yeah still going, um, so we're always expecting that. Hey, Akita saved my life. <laughs> Actually, no, I do it's like. Just... I think Throne of Glass is like my top one for me now, but still. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I kind of do wish yeah I read Tog first instead of Akita, but we can't take that back. My because I only read Crescent City one and two in the last month. <laughs> um. So I've got a very fresh opinion on that on those books. Thing that really interested me is so I read as I said, I read in publishing order. So I read Throne of Glass and went fantastic fantasy series. Like I I read more romance these days, but growing up fantasy was my jam. So, you know, I was like, Great, I'm back reading this fantasy series, this is great And then I got to Akatar and I felt like did I read these in the wrong order? Because Throne of Glass was written so much better than Akatar, at least that's how I felt. And I think it came down to the fact that it felt like the world building wasn't as good. You know, great characters, great characters in the series, but it felt like the world building compared to Throne of Glass was just not there. And then last month when I got up to Crescent City, I was like, she's finally she's done she's got <laughs> yeah. good characters and yeah. good world building. Like, yeah. you know, where everyone was saying it's so hard to get into Crescent City 1 because of all the world building. I'm like, actually, no, I found it pretty straightforward. Like, you know, you took a little bit, but no more than other any other. I have characters. a friend who I'm like begging to read Crescent City because she's read, she hasn't finished, but she started Throne of Glass and she's read Akatar. And I'm like, I am begging you because like it's modern. She's like, oh, I think that's why I would struggle to get into. It. I'm like, no, it makes it so much more exciting and alluring to blend like our world and this fantasy world. So, so what I was gonna say as well is that yeah, semi-genre within each 
of the different book series is, is completely different. Like Crescent City, you'd consider urban fantasy mixed with modern tech and all that stuff. Tog is just straight up medieval magic traditional esque fantasy, yeah. traditional. And then Akatar is like a somewhere it's like a in pseudo. between <laughs> it's a pseudo yeah, it's medieval to an extent, but yeah, they have apartments and or other sorts of things. Whereas, yeah, Crescent City is completely different. And, yeah. And maybe it was hard. I was just going to say, maybe it's hard to have a bigger uh, crossover interaction because the worlds itself are so different. And, yeah, it would be hard to imagine someone like Ka- uh, Cassian or Asriel interacting with the guns or, like, going to a bar with, like, DJ music, et cetera, et cetera. Like, it'd just be hard to grasp sometimes. The only thing I know is that I will never feel the same way I felt at the end of Kingdom of Ash. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. (laughs) Like, nothing is ever going to beat that. That was my peak. (laughs) Yeah, normally we throw to the stars that listen, which is a little segment that we do where we pluck a one-star review and a five-star review from Goodreads. Obviously, we can't do that because we are... Well, I have not finished the book. However, fun game, thrust it upon you both. If you could pick... If you can create your own one-star for this first part, well, first part, what would it be? And what's a five-star aspect? We know what Kenzie's one-star is. Just the whole thing is shit is a shit hole. <laughs> uh, if I wanted this much cave, I would have gone and played Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that was so good. Um, one star was Bryce opening the the tomb, the the the, the sarcophagus. Yeah, yeah. Because mm, what an idiot. <laughs> Yeah, it was like you you already are struggling to kill these creatures in your own world. Here's one that's locked up. I'm just going to open it and just, you know, you get, they were still communicating fine when it was locked in there. You were safe. Leave it. My one star is just like Baxian just biting off Rune's hand. Like, it was just gross. And then it led to nowhere. He, yeah. he was just crippled for yeah, a short for time. <laughs> His hand grows back. Like, it's fine. Let's Let's have proper disability. My five star is that it took three fey... Um, and the mask to defeat a Middengard worm, but human Pharaoh did it. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Oh my god, I completely forgot about that. <laughs> human Pharaoh did it by throwing some bones and mud around. <laughs> I love that. I'm actually changing my one star. <laughs> my one star is the silver vein. Oh, yeah, that's right. Stuff the silver vein. Yeah, the silver, silver vein. vein. Oh, <laughs> all right. Five star aspect. Five star would be taking down the Astari, mm. like the stabbing, stabbing it with both blades, like mm. all them taking on. Yeah, it was that 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 fight scene was really cool. I mean, to be fair, it was Nessa's kill, which I feel like wasn't fair because this is Astari is technically Bryce's enemy, and I want Bryce to be the one to kill her enemies. But whatever. We know we know why Nesta can do that, so it's fine. Yeah, but also I think it's it was important. Yet again, this this is where yeah. it causes issues with the whole. It's not an Akatar mm. book, so it shouldn't matter. But Nesta's gone through a lot of growth recently as being you know a warrior and a defender. Like even Bryce comments on Nesta as a warrior type, and so it was important for Nesta to be the one to defend against Bryce's stupidity. By opening the coffin. But in the grand scheme of things, yeah, Nesta ultimately has a steering power. And I feel like, it, yeah, other than the swords, and once Bryce learns how to use them properly, yeah, only a steering power could potentially kill a steering, which mm-hmm. is fair enough. All right, your five-star aspect, Kenzie. Uh, I suppose Lydia saving the boys. It's great. I love Lydia. Favourite character. Live, laugh, love Lydia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Eat, pray, love Lydia. <laughs> Alrighty. Any other, like, lingering thoughts? I mean, yes, but we... Oh, really yeah. I have one, one that's, that's unrelated, part. and it's for Maddie, so when we, like, say our farewell, don't hang up. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. I suppose that concludes this episode of Little Book Club. Thanks for listening along. So many tangents. So much off topic, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. It's fun when there's three of us. <laughs> yeah, I know. We need to have Maddie on more often. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> we can offer you zero dollars a year salary. <laughs> <laughs> just just offer me good times. Oh yeah. Have you had a good time? Was it worth it? I have. It's oh, great. 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 Now we're just gonna up it for part two and potentially part three. Whatever we decide. So yeah, check us out on the socials, Instagram, TikTok, links in the bio. 
find us in all the places. Thank you again, Maddie, for joining us. It's been fun, been a pleasure. And I know you'll be joining us for part two and three. Or just part two. Part again, two whatever slash we three. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that goes. All right, thank Alrighty. you, everyone. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Bye.